and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial my name is Babak and this is the channel of the world of building design uh, so in this tutorial uh, we're talking about the carrier HAP software and specifically we are focusing on the space properties and the information we have to put in the space properties when we develop a new um, you know a new building thermal load profile in the uh, in the carrier HAP software. So uh, I have broken down this uh, tutorials to, to focus on every part of the, the information we have to fill in. So uh, today we only focus on the space properties and the general tab on the carrier HAP uh, software. So uh, on the space properties and on the general tab, basically the information you have to input is about your building uh, you know area um, and also uh, the information related to the ventilation requirement uh, for for your space uh, so when you define a space for a number of occupant or certain type of occupancy um, the the software or carrier HAP uh, makes the ventilation calculation based on the ASHRAE standard so the ASHRAE standard 62.1 would be the reference for the carrier HAP software to determine the ventilation requirement, um, you know, for your space. Uh, so um, along this tutorial, I will also visit the ASHRAE website to show you where uh, that standard is located and how you can look into the preview, um, you know, version of this database online if you're interested to see how carrier um, you know, uh, selects the the ventilation requirement for for these uh, spaces. I have put it in the link uh, below the description. You can go and visit and uh, learn a lot more about um, you know this requirement. So ASHRAE standard uh, is uh, is uh, very well known and is exercised in North America for designing uh, new buildings or existing buildings for their. Uh, for their um, you know energy systems for their ventilation and many of the HVAC system uh, designs are governed under this standard so it is important to to learn all of this in conjunction with the software itself so so I'm going to take you to the uh, software to go over the space properties and also the uh, general information you have to fill in so stay with us please don't forget to subscribe and uh, press on the subscribe button below and uh, we'll continue with this tutorial. So I am now in the um, uh, HAP um, carrier environment and as we said we're going to look at the space um, property. So in the left column where we have the space um, I have clicked already on the space and then on the right hand side uh, we can have the space names shown so remember that we have to create a new space um, and then create a name for it. So I have already created a space. I haven't made a name to it. It's a default space. Uh, the floor area is 10,000 square feet. So I'm going to double click on the default space. I can change this um, to, to anything else that I want in terms of its name. So remember in the space property, there are multiple tabs. I'm breaking down all of these tabs into different tutorial because uh, for somebody who is uh, new to HVAC system design, you need to comprehend uh, this information. You need to, you know, do a lot of uh, personal reading to catch up with the requirement and understanding on how a building load or heating cooling load is calculated. So I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, overwhelm anybody. So let's focus on the first portion, which is the space property general tab. I'm not going to go to any other tab for now. So in the general tab, as, as I said, you put the name of your space and then the, the area of your space in uh, square feet in here, because remember that initially we determined the, uh, the unit of our software to be in, uh, in the uh, imperial uh, unit uh, other than uh, metric you can have uh, both option you can switch from either um, you know metric to imperial or vice versa in this case i have selected the imperial unit and uh, the typical height of your 
floor. If you have a you know if you have a space with a ceiling uh, plenum uh, where you have suspended ceiling or you have a drywall or hard ceiling, you can put um, the total height between the floor uh, to the ceiling level. So uh, I have this as nine feet as an average uh, elevation uh, up to the ceiling and. Building weight is the information. I'll tend to keep it at medium for now, but the uh, rationale behind this number is that uh, depending on the weight of your building per square feet of your uh, space, um, you know, the absorption of the heat uh, into the space um, and when it turns into actual air conditioning load will change depending uh, the lighter the building is versus the heavier it is. So the heavier the building weight per square feet is, um, you know, the longer delay it is between the absorption of the heat or heat gain until that heat turns into air conditioning load. So uh, you can have it calculated uh, from your building before you create this, uh, starting to create this um, thermal load calculation model or this profile, or you can, uh, you know, have an estimation of the material you do use in the building and select between these two. So uh, in here, the number 70 pound per square feet is the medium, uh, you know, medium uh, number. Uh, or here, if you go all the way to the end, you have 130 as the heaviest, um, you know, um, heaviest weight per square feet, and we have a 30 as the lightest. So I'm going to keep it as 70 as it was. Okay, this is very important part of your uh, determination in the general tab in the space property. And this is the outdoor air ventilation requirement. Okay, so if you create a space and you want to do calculate that, you're pretty much looking at all of the building or a space thermal load. So, uh, in this case, you have to also calculate the ventilation load as well, because depending on how many people are staying in that space, you have to understand how much fresh air you have to bring into the space. This is a mandate um, from different standards, whether the local authority standards, whether it's uh, from you know um, technical standards, uh, something like ASHRAE standard that you can see in, in bottom here, Ashley 62.1 is also a total, um, you know, total subject or topic uh, documentation talking about the requirement of the ventilation for various different facilities. So this area basically talks about what type of space you are designing. If this is a building that is educational or anything else. So if you go into this drop down menu, uh, you have a whole uh, list of all the different type of uh, facility types or a space type that you can select. And depending on the selection you make, the outdoor air requirement per person and the outdoor air requirement per square feet of that environment is different. Or sometimes they are similar depending on the type of facility. So that's the way it is calculated. I would show you uh, the ASHRAE standard after this part. To, to see what is the rationale behind this, um, you know, this kind of calculation, what equation is used, uh, some summary of, uh, you know, this part. So ASHRAE, so the HAB carrier has a built-in ASHRAE 62.1 in it. The for this version is 2016. Um, so built-in into this software, so that uh, you know, uh, immediately after you select any of this type of occupancy, for example, if I go to a say a, a office break room office break room uh, this is the requirement i would need 5 cfm per person and 0.12 cfm per square feet of the uh, space i'm defining if i change that say to a, a different type of um, requirement for example if this is an education daycare sick room space then that's changed to 10 CFM per person because the, you know, um, depending on the age of the occupant in the space, the air 
ventilation requirement is different, even though the outdoor air per square foot of that facility might not change that much. Okay, so these are the requirements and the selection of the facilities that you have to pick in here, and that's very, very important. Now, you might ask a question, okay, our building comprise of many different type of uh, spaces, how we have to determine that with here, okay? So remember that you have to ultimately create multiple spaces, many, many spaces. For example, you built on your corridor separately from your bedroom in a house or anything else. So in one building, you have to create multiple separate spaces and, um, you know, attribute the, you know, the, the type of occupancy to that space to have these numbers calculated for the ventilation, okay? So that's pretty much everything you have to fill up in this section, general section of the um, space property in the HAP carrier. And now I'm going to take you into the uh, ASHRAE um, website where you can uh, fully access the preview version of the ASHRAE uh, 62.1 standard to see what kind of database the carrier HAP holds in itself to do this calculation, okay? So once I've determined my facility, I can just uh, go to the different tabs and complete those information. Remember that there are tons of information we have to fill in every of these tabs um, related to the space. Uh, so basically space property comprises of many of this information. So I'm gonna exit from here and take you to actually a standard site. So if you go to the ASHRAE standard site, I have, I have given you this uh, link in here that you can visit. It's down below in the description um, of this tutorial. You can go and visit. There is uh, one set of document here, which is called the Preview ASHRAE Standard and Guideline. You can go over this. Every of these ASHRAEs um, are many pages of a standard specifically related to the type of design you're doing and they are governing this different kind of standard and application for a uh, for a design for your you know HVAC system design. Um, so in here down below, I can go to ASHRAE standard 62.1 2019. Remember that 62.1 is different than 62.2. There are for different standards. I use the this version 62.1 and. When you get in here, you go to preview version of the standard. Uh, it's not downloadable. If you need to download this, you have to purchase, um, you know, this standard from ASHRAE uh, organization. Uh, but at the same time, you can visit their website in this address. I have linked this one down below in the um, description that you can visit, uh, you know, and do look at it um, as a preview version to, to see uh, what this standard is about. I might uh, get another uh, tutorial specifically related to this. Please put in the comment section if you're interested in this kind of tutorial as well, if you need to know what are the importance of this information are. So I go to the page uh, 16 of this standard just to show you what um, what equation governs that calculation that we just uh, looked together. And go to page uh, 16. Okay. Okay, here we are. Okay, so if you look at this equation here, breathing zone outdoor airflow. Basically, this is the equation where the uh, ASHRAE recommends for calculation of ventilation rate or what you saw in the space property for the ventilation. You have the area, AZ, the area of the um, space. You have RA, as you can see, uh, which is the outdoor requirement per square footage which is in this table, we'll look at it. And you have the, um, you have the uh, PZ, 
which is the uh, number of occupants that you have in that space. In our case, um, we, we, we didn't look at the number of occupants, but that's pretty much what it is about. And then RP is, again, the outdoor rate requirement per person for that type of occupancy. So these are uh, the type of occupancy. These rates are all uh, identified in this table 6.1. So we can go that in that set table. So the, the result of this calculation of this equation gives you the uncorrected um, breathing zone outdoor airflow. When I say uncorrected, it means that there are sometimes some correction um, you know, uh, applies or some coefficient applies to it to correct the number requirement. We'll look at it at a later time. So if you come to this table 6.1, the minimum fresh air is required here for different occupancy. This table is pretty much what is, um, you know, in the library of the carrier app, and they use this version of 2016 to come up with the requirements. So you can see the people outdoor air uh, requirement for two different, um, you know, units, liter per second uh, CFM, cubic feet per meter minute is showing up here. Um, the, you know, air rate per, um, or a square footage of the space is shown here. And another thing is that is interesting here is that the occupancy that actually recommends per thousand square feet or the density or the number of occupants per thousand square feet or hundred square meter is recommended to be this number. So for every thousand square feet of say, uh, um, say a day, uh, day room, for every thousand, you can have um, up to 30 individuals in the room. And this is the air class uh, for the type of air that needs to be introduced to those spaces. So I'm not going to go deep into this um, standard. I just wanted to show you how to get a handle and get a hold of this, um, you know, this standard and understand where ASHRAE brings its uh, information uh, into, into the ventilation area or in ventilation space. So thank you very much for watching this video. I will continue with the next tutorial when we get into the internal load and uh, determine uh, what kind of information we have to put and what are the rational, where we can go get those information from. So uh, stay with us in the next tutorial and uh, we'll discuss that later. Thank you.